Describe Colleen in one word. Courage. Dedication. Hardworking. Resilient. Colleen Smith began playing volleyball when she was 13 years old for the Sky High Volleyball Club near her hometown of Cary Grove, Illinois. She was a good athlete. I believe she started on her second team at the time as a seventh grader, and she progressed very quickly after one year of club. And we realized that she belonged on a different team in later years, and we made that move, and it was a move we didn't regret. She was a great athlete. And Colleen's career took off. At 16, her sky-high team won the AAUs, and Colleen was named MVP of the tournament. After that, colleges began to take notice, and Colleen chose to pursue her volleyball career and education at Indiana University. I committed early my junior year of high school, um, and I was just like extremely, extremely excited. Um, that was one of my goals to play in the Big Ten, um, and it was just I fell in love with the campus and the volleyball program, uh, and the coaching staff, and the girls. So it was definitely like the perfect fit. So I was really looking forward to that. But something else emerged, something that threatened her health and her volleyball career. She she had some swelling in her legs and I believe if I remember correctly she had to take a couple weeks off from practice and competition and no one had any idea what this was all about. Some of my symptoms were I had really achy joints and my knees were really swollen and inflamed so I would wake up some days and I wouldn't even be able to walk and it was kind of it was really hard because I was going through doubles during you know preseason and obviously it wasn't wasn't easy at all um, and then that's when I started to get uh, bloody noses and then my eyes would be like really red and inflamed and everyone kind of was like what the heck's going on and on September 22nd 2011 Colleen was diagnosed with Wegner's granulomatosis autoimmune disease this leads to inflammation of the blood vessels According to the American Society of Neurology, only one or two people per 100,000 develop this rare disease. After the doctors gave her the news, Colleen called her dad. I looked it up online and I saw some bad things and I was supposed to coach a football game that night. I ran out of there, ran home and pretty much almost cried the whole way home. Couldn't believe this was happening. For Colleen, the news was devastating. Once like my coach and my doctors kind of said that I wouldn't be able to play again, it was really hard for me to like take that in just because I had been playing for so long and for them to just take that away from me, it was like, it was definitely a setback and it was really hard. After the diagnosis, Colleen began chemotherapy. Then her coach at Indiana asked her to sign what was called a medical non-counter release. It's used under NCAA rules for a scholarship athlete that, quote, who becomes injured or ill to the point that he or she apparently never again will be able to participate in intercollegiate athletics. This meant that Colleen would continue to receive her scholarship, but that it would not count against the team's 12 full scholarship limit. It meant Colleen's scholarship would be used for another player. I just knew that it was kind of in the best, it was the best thing for my situation um, and that was kind of like what the co my coach wanted and the doctors. So, I mean, you could kind of look at both ways of it. Some people could think that it was signed too soon or, you know, but in their case they were kind of just worried and they didn't really know, you know, the dynamics of my disease exactly since it's so rare. Signing the release meant Colleen's volleyball career at Indiana was over. But instead of this devastating her, Colleen's mother said she just kept pushing forward to never give up. She was always so determined to get back on the court. Volleyball is her life. She loves it, loves the sport. I mean, even when she was going through drills and when she was sick, she never gave up. She was like throwing up in garbage cans, that type of thing. She, she does not like to be out of the game. Colleen's focus? Getting healthy and getting back on the court. But this would not happen at Indiana. And that was when Colleen went to her former club director, Scott Harris, for help. And DePaul was one of the first schools to contact him. Because she knew she was a hot commodity as far as a setter. Uh, and coming from the Big Ten to DePaul, that's, that, was, that was a great move for Colleen, given her situation. And for Nadia, it was a great pickup. You know, I had recruited her and, you know, knew who she was before DePaul and, you know, certainly when I was here and uh, knew of her, her abilities as a setter and, 
you know, um, the level that she could play at. So absolutely, we became interested in her at that point in time. And it's been a great match ever since. Since coming to DePaul, Colleen's been the starting setter and leader for this team. Um, and just the resiliency that she's shown as an athlete, um, she, she works to prove everybody wrong. Um, you know, like I said, she's a hard worker. She doesn't take any days off. But I think her motivation is that, you know, at one point in time, somebody told her that she would never play volleyball again. And she's proving everybody wrong. Before her illness, volleyball was just a game for Colleen. But now, it's much more. It's changed a lot. Um, I definitely like don't take anything for granted. Um, just when the doctors kind of told me that I wasn't going to play again, it was kind of hard for me just because I like kept thinking back to like my last practice and like my games and like what I could have done differently. So every single time I like come to practice and before games, I'm always like, this needs to be like the best practice of my life. You know, you never know what could happen at any given time. Whenever Colleen plays, you'll see a little red ribbon tied to her shoe in honor of autoimmune disease. It's just a reminder of where she was and how far she's come.